name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. I hope this message finds you safe, secure, and well, and especially peaceful during this very hectic time in our country's calendar where many of us have children who are going back to school, either in person, hybrid, or virtually, and it has been quite a challenge to say the least, where work priorities still remain and we are still trying to figure out our path forward. In today's episode of Living the Word, I would love for us to really talk about how to set up a blueprint and how to establish a way of life, a godly way of life, especially during these new uh, pandemic times. And the questions I've often heard from young parents or new parents is, what's the appropriate way of, of living in this world today? How do we identify examples that we can follow to uh, give us guidance on exactly how to raise our children in a godly way, how we can live in a, in a godly way? And, and ultimately, it's a lot of questions around modeling. Prior to COVID happening, this pandemic, we had our networks of people we can visit and have conversations with to ask questions around and to bounce ideas, to get best practices of what we can do in our daily lives. One unfortunate byproduct of this pandemic is that we've limited our interactions, physical ones at least, and even though we try our best to be able to connect with each other through virtual means, it's just not the same. Our touch points with each other are more limited, especially uh, as we are living in a more virtual remote environment. And so now the questions do remain and need to be answered, especially as life continues to go and it's moving at a more frantic pace. I point this to St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 1, and it reads as follows. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. I'll read it again. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling for aroma. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Be imitators of God. In the same way that children look up to their parents as an example, we are also asked to imitate God, to imitate his actions. And for those of us who are especially aware of the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ, it is always about extreme humility as well as a sacrificial service to all of us, to mankind. Now, we can understand or at least comprehend this love that God has. But God didn't limit it, our experience to simply those to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ became the blueprint, the icon, the image, and God himself for us to see and witness. But Christ also commissioned us through his apostles, through his saints, through his martyrs, real people that we can learn about and follow in their example. If as an apostle I'm imitating God perfectly, I therefore can imitate an apostle. And by doing so, imitating him or her, I can now become an imitator of God. Jesus is asking us, through the words of St. Paul the Apostle, to imitate God so that when people are watching us, they see God acting in us. And so the church has a vast number of models, role models, that we can imitate. One role model that I particularly 
am fond of and akin to is the model of St. Polycarpus of Smyrna, who was martyred by the ruling Roman Empire for disobeying the rule of the land and professing the faith of Jesus Christ and the faith of the apostles. In being sacrificed, they place St. Polycarp on a stake and burned him. And the hagiography reads that when they burned him, what came out was a smell of sweet fragrance. Do you hear the connection between Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 and this account of St. Polycarpus? And walk in love as Christ also loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. St. Polycarpus lived a life so godly, so holy, that when they martyred him, they smelled sweet-smelling incense. Therefore, my friends, in order for you to be an imitator of God, the mark of this imitator is one who is living a life of Christ perfectly and therefore becomes a model to others. So for us, it's important for us to expand our network, to have not only people in title being in our network, but actually having a relationship with them. In the same way, if we think about our networks we have today, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all of these people can be considered friends. But truly, truly, we have to have relationships for them to be truly friends, for they're useless in time of need. So we develop a relationship. And my friends, if you are looking to develop a relationship or to walk a life that is an imitation of God, this relationship needs to be very clear and explicit. So the three places you can develop relationships with God. Number one, you develop a relationship with God in prayer and checking in with him as often as possible, morning and evening, throughout your day. The second place we develop a relationship with God is through his word, reading and learning not only the life in the New Testament, but the Old Testament and having a full comprehension of how God works, how God inspires us. Then the third place we can have inspiration and a relationship with God is through the lives of his apostles, through the lives of his saints, through the lives of his martyrs and his teachers. When we develop a relationship with, with them, we now have someone to intercede for us, to pray for us, and to beseech us. A few episodes back, we spoke about the intercession of St. Mary. The same intercession can be had with many saints, whether it is the saint of your particular parish or a saint of your own choosing. When you read the lives of saints, identify the virtues that are holy and imitate them. Parse the stories and learn about them and to hold true the virtues they had. In the life of St. Polycarpus, we learn a life, a life that is virtuous of holding on to your faith. And for us, despite the worldly pressures and temptations, we hold true our faith and how important that is for us and to witness it to others. Dearly beloved, in order for you to be an imitator of God, you must have a relationship with God in prayer, in his word, and through his saints. God is giving us more than we can ever handle. And he can give us more that that can help us and support us. The last comment I make to you is that there are many people in this world and many people who the church has not accounted for as saints. There are holy people existing in the world today. My advice to you, cling to them, have a relation with them and have a connection in a community where you can have accountability, you can ask questions and form those communities, not just based upon ethnicity, 
but to form them and shape them so that ultimately you are following this commandment that St. Paul is giving us. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. As you are learning how to live a life and live a word, live the word, imitating God is this sincerest form of flattery. Imitate him and show to others what it means to walk a life in Christ. To the glory and honor of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever unto ages of ages. Amen. Thank you.